Speaker, I don't need to criticize the, this government's immigration policy because the Prime Minister has done it for me. That's right. <laughs> he has said that the immigration system is, quote, out of control. Those are his words, reiterated by his immigration minister, both of them apparently blaming their preceding immigration minister for screwing the entire system up so badly that they allowed hundreds of thousands of students to come in where, to study at fake institutions that don't even exist, diploma mills. By the government's own description, now those kids are abused, taken advantage of, forced to work 20 hours a week, going home in body bags, forced to rent out half a bed for four hours a day, paying $700 a month. Disgusting. It is absolute chaos in our immigration system after eight years of the total incompetence and the cocktail of incompetence and radicalism that has defined this prime minister and his appallingly incompetent uh, immigration and now housing minister, the member from Nova Scotia, who has given us 35 homeless encampments in the biggest city in his home province. That is the deplorable record that no one, that you having fallen into a coma eight years ago, would have been shocked to wake up to. Questions and comments? Uh, the Honourable Member for Victoria. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. And I have a simple policy question. It should have a simple yes or no answer. The industrial carbon tax on big polluters has been doing the lion's share of emissions reduction. It is one of the most important climate policies. We all know where the Conservative leader stands on the consumer carbon tax, but he's avoided answering questions on the industrial carbon tax on big oil and gas. So please, could he answer just a simple yes or no question? Will he scrap the industrial carbon tax? The official opposition. There is no industrial carbon tax on the oil and gas sector, uh, the, so the member should do her research before she asks questions like that. In Alberta, the province has something called the tier system, which is a provincially administered system uh, that stands for technology uh, uh, for emissions uh, reductions, and it allows the large industrial players to invest in green uh, initiatives to reduce their emissions uh, at no cost to consumers uh, and is one of the reasons why our oil and gas sector is the most advanced in the world. And what I propose is that we produce more of our clean Canadian oil and glass to gas to displace the dirty dictators of the world. The real question is why does the NDP want to put good union workers in Western Canada on the unemployment lines, steal their jobs and send those jobs to foreign dictators around the world. We, common sense conservatives, will bring home those powerful paychecks for our people in this country. Questions ah, political theater where the suits throw blame around like it's a game of musical chairs. Uh, the immigration minister is in a pickle, suddenly discovering students who were promised Harvard, but got Hogwarts. That takes a special kind of magic, creating universities from thin air. Now, it's about that living arrangement, half a bed for four hours daily. That's not a sleeping schedule. It's a shift work for dreams. A dollar seven hundred a month, it sounds more like a subscription service for sleep rather than a proper rental. Who knew real estate could get so creative? As for the debate over who wrecked the immigration system, it's reminiscent of a faulty toaster at a garage sale nobody wants to admit buying. It was fine when I got it, they claim, of course, and I own a bridge in Brooklyn. Then there's the carbon tax saga. They wanted a simple yes or no answer. What they got was a lecture that could double as a TED Talk on Alberta's environmental strategies. Asking politicians for straightforward answers might as well ask a cat to fetch.